Hello, this is Peter Newman. I'm a member on the ANSWER student community and I have recorded a couple of videos on using bolt pretension to clamp plates together. A solid bolt with solid plates here and uh, solid plates with a beam connection. Uh, the third model is this video uh, inspired by a question from another member, Aaron, who uh, wants to put bolts through four holes so that uh, two beams can be clamped with two plates. And uh, Aaron has provided uh, sheet bodies for these things plus uh, some solid little stubs that we're going to use in this model. So we want a static structural and we're going to uh, import a the model and let's open it in space claim and I'll pause the video while space claim opens. Space claim has opened the geometry that will be provided to you if you want to do this from scratch. You can see the beams and the two plates and the solids that represent the fasteners. We're going to replace those solid bodies that are in these um, components with beams and that is as simple as using the prepare tab and the extract tab and clicking on the four solids and they get replaced by beams instantly. So also the solid is uh, suppressed for physics and the beams are present with the correct profile so it's really a wonderful system and that is now what we'll bring into mechanical so I can close space claim and start mechanical and again pause the video. So mechanical has brought the geometry over. Uh, it does not know for the surfaces what their thickness was because they were not created from mid-surface uh, extraction. If they were it would have brought that over but I know that they're four and a half millimeters thick and uh, the beams are all here. What we want to do is uh, in this uh, area we want to connect the vertex of the beam to this face and we're going to use a fixed joint to do that and it'll be convenient to, since there's eight of them if we uh, hide these and do a little um, named selection which can be done by inserting the named selections uh, we won't use that one but what we will do is we will uh, pick with the vertex tool all of the endpoints and name those to be beam ends. And now we're going to invert the geometry, invert the visibility, I should say. And we want the eight faces to be another named selection, so we'll filter on faces. We want one with the control key held down, these four, and then the four on the bottom, which are these four. And so N for named selection, and that is the uh, clamp faces. So uh, you'll see why I had those named before, but we can show all bodies now. We're going to make one joint, which a joint is found under the connections folder. It's going to be a fixed joint, and there's going to be a uh, surface, which can be put into either side of the joint, and then there's going to be a vertex which is going to be put into the other side of the joint. So here is the joint. Uh, let's pull it up here. A face on the reference side, a vertex on the mobile side. Well, we want eight more of those, and it's not a lot of work to do that, but uh, it's a good opportunity to show the automation tool that uses the named selections. And so under automation, there's an object generator it will take that fixed joint and on the reference side I can pick the faces on the mobile side pick the beams and so long as they're within um, 
10 millimeters uh, or say six millimeters it will uh, create a joint and so I say generate and it goes off using the two named selections and creates joints for us so here's all of our joints done now which saved us a little bit of clicking uh, what we want to do next is put in some contacts and unfortunately um, Mechanical automatically decided to put this in for us, which is annoying. Uh, what we want to do instead is insert our own manual region and we're going to use uh, faces here, so face filtering and we will turn off the object generator, go back to the connections tab. Uh, actually we'll use the selection tab because when we pick one face we want to actually expand to all the faces on that body and put that say in the target side and then we want to pick this and control click that and then expand to the limits and put that in the contact side and by turning shell thickness effect on it automatically offsets the contacts to take account of the thickness of each body which these are the mid surfaces for uh, and these are going to be frictional contact get a bit more real estate here frictional with say a point two and uh, the red is facing up which is good the blue and that means it's top if it's uh, default the other one needed to be flipped over to the bottom so this contact is working the way we want it and if we simply copy that and then dis uh, duplicate that we can then reassign the um, the blue side which is this one not to use that but to use this and go to limits and now we've uh, got a contact on the bottom but uh, I need to flip both of them to the opposite so this needs to go to bottom and this needs to go to top so now I have that frictional contact in this model I'm not going to do the contact between the beam and the hole that's a topic for another video uh, because it's uh, not straightforward to do here but the friction here between the clamped plates with bolt pretension will prevent these beams from uh, sliding in this joint so we need a few more things we need a uh, fixed support and we need some bolt pretension and a mesh so mesh maybe we'll uh, use six six millimeter elements and go ahead and take the defaults on that um, the one exception may be how many elements along the beams we must have a minimum of two so that the bolt pretension works I'm going to hide these while we do the bolt pretension and we do in fact have two elements on the beams so that uh, minimum quantity is met if we wanted to guarantee that we would put a mesh control of sizing and demand two elements uh, let's just do that quick in case we decide to change so on these four objects we can put a sizing control for number of elements and force it to be two and tell it it's not optional it's required that's what hard means so uh, if we ever change mesh sizes and it would result in a single element there that would break the bolt pretension so we safe from that now so we do want to go to bolt pretension which is a load and here it is and we want to do this bolt um, it's the shortcut actually we want to do it in a two-step solution so we'll go to analysis settings and say we want two steps and we'll come back do some more on that in a minute but the bulk pretension is loaded to 5,000 newtons and then in step two it's locked so that is a typical use of bolts 
and we want four more of those so I'll duplicate that and then we're going to uh, reassign that edge so now we've got our four bolt pretensions and they are load and lock we need a couple more we'll show all bodies and we'll pick on this edge here for a fixed support and we'll put on this edge here a force by components and the direction will be minus 100 but uh, that will be for step two in step one we'll have no force while we're tightening the bolts um, whenever you have uh, frictional contact you always must insert a contact tool and check that the contacts are closed so we'll generate that and if they're not closed we need to take corrective action so it's uh, computing that and now it's found ah, a tiny gap that will cause the solver to fail so we need to fix that and that's on this bottom one and that is here and that is interface treatment adjust to touch I'll pause the video for a minute so now we can uh, rerun the contact tool and find that adjust to touch has closed that gap for us and there it is so now on to some last customization before we run the model and that is to adjust the analysis settings and whenever there's a contact and bolt pretension we need some um, override the automatic stepping and we'll try say 20 sub steps and to make sure it gets started generally solvers it's going to probably choose direct anyway but we'll tell it to and the other adjustment is to turn on large deflection because we're going to bend this more than a wall thickness uh, the last tweak is under solution information should things go wrong we want some diagnostic information and that is sufficient to hit the solve button and I just have a lowly two core machine so I'm going to uh, start it up watch it for a minute see the elements go by and see the solver start and then you will go to force convergence and watch as each iteration clicks by to see it converge and then um, I'll pause the video and we'll see it when it's done so the solver completed the pretension in uh, looks like 17 steps and then completed applying the tip force uh, after a total of 36 increments iterations I should say and uh, we can look at some results now so let's insert uh, total deformation let's insert a we can insert a bolt tool and look at some uh, stresses in the bolt but uh, the other thing is the contact tool insert a contact tool and insert a pressure on that so let's evaluate those results and here is the total deformation at the end of step two and uh, step one is probably not very interesting let's retrieve that result uh, just some deformation around the bolts as they tightened but uh, more interesting is the pattern of the deformation or the pattern of the pressure at step one uh, we see a, a nice symmetric pattern and at step two it goes a little bit 
asymmetric as the load down um, peels the pressure away on this plate mm, a little bit and not on the top plate so uh, the other th interesting thing is to click on the solution information folder where we saw this but now click back on geometry and here is the spider that is created at the top and bottom to uh, create a little rigid connection to the beam that represents the shaft of the uh, fastener out to the uh, elements in the ring that we picked for the face. So that is the uh, complete uh, story on putting bolts using beam elements to squeeze two plates onto uh, two connecting plates and have some uh, lateral deflection. Thanks for watching.